Welcome back friends. This is a hands-on tutorial about load balancer. We will launch a load balancer. But first we need to set up a web server to send them web traffic, right? First we will launch EC2 instances. We will launch two EC2 instances. Okay, let's click on launch instances. I will launch two of them so that the load balancer can distribute traffic on both of them. Okay. Ideally, we should have three web servers and a load balancer could distribute traffic on three. That's what you usually see. But for our use case, two is okay. And for the name, let me copy and paste the name here. And this is the name here. The name is first EC2 instance ALB. Right now, both of them will have first EC2 instance ALB. But later on when an instance comes up, I will change the name of the second one to the second EC2 instance ALB. For OS images, I will take on Amazon Linux 2 AMI image, which is free tier eligible. For architecture, 64-bit is fine. For instance type, as usual, I will pick up T2 Micro, which is free tier eligible, but there are other options as well. In general, T2.micro is the preferred choice when practicing because this is the free tier eligible instance type. Okay. For the key pair, I do not need any key pair because this is a load balancer. I don't need to SSH to this machine. Proceed without a key pair. For security group, I will select the existing security group. Let me take this one because we created it when we set up the web server demo, right? For storage, 8 gigs is fine. For advanced details, scroll down. The interesting part is user data. Here I will copy and paste the shell script that I have. Let me go through each line. When the EC2 instance comes up, it will start executing whatever script we have inside user data. The first line tells that we will use bash shell. And then the second line yum update dash y means when this line runs, it will update the OS. Okay? Dash y means whenever yes, no option comes, it will accept yes without you need to type it. This line will install the httpd daemon which means the web server. And the fourth line will create the index.html page which is the home page for the web server. In that we will have one line, hello world from. This one will add the DNS name and private DNS name of the web server of the machine on which the web server is running. This line will start the HTTP daemon, which means the web server. And the final line will enable HTTPD. What this line does when we stop the EC2 instance and start it again, we don't need to start the web server. The web server will start automatically with this line. Rest all things are fine. Let's click on launch instances. And now that the instance has launched, let me come here. And view all instances. As you can notice, there are two instances are coming up. This is my first instance. Let's change the name of this one to the second EC2 instance. We need to test both of these web servers if they are running fine or not. Still, they are in a pending state. We'll wait for them to come up. As you can see now, both instances are in a running state. That being the case, we can test whether both these web servers are set up correctly or not. Let's take the first one and click here. Either I can copy this public IP address or I can just click here on the open address. I will click here on the open address link and I need to remove S from here because we have just opened the HTTP port, not HTTPS. Hit enter key and as you can see the result, hello world from. And this is the private DNS name of this machine. If you look at the DNS name, this guy, right? Similarly, let's test whether the second web server is set up correctly or not. I can click here, open address. I need to remove S because only I have port 80 open. This one is the first one, let me show this here. And this is the second one, right, if I click here. And if I click here, as you can notice, both these web servers are set up correctly and they are giving the output of what they are supposed to do. Both of these web servers are running correctly. Now I'm going to set up a load balancer. I will click on create load balancer. We have been provided with three types of load balancers. We will be setting up an application load balancer. Application load balancer we use when we need to handle HTTP and HTTPS traffic on the targets, right? If we are handling HTTP and HTTPS on target web servers, then we use application load balancer. And if we are handling TCP, UDP, and TLS, then we use network load balancer. 
Questions related to this may come up in the exam, so you need to know very well. Application load balancer for HTTP and HTTPS and network load balancer for TCP, UDP and TLS protocol. Another important point to note is that network load balancer is capable of handling millions of requests per second while maintaining ultra low latency. That being the case, if you need to handle millions of requests per second with ultra low latency, use network load balancer. Okay. This is a very high performance load balancer. Remember that. Now the third one is the gateway load balancer. Gateway load balancer you use when you need to handle security, intrusion detection and firewalls, right? It is used to analyze network traffic. We have application load balancer, network load balancer and gateway load balancer. And the other one we have is classic load balancer. This is not used a lot and is just here. And there is a possibility that next time when you see it, this might not be here. So I'll skip it. Let's click on application load balancer. We will create this one. Click on create. Now the first thing we need to give a name for this load balancer. This is my load balancer name. Scheme, internet facing is fine. IP address type IPv4 is fine. For network mapping, everything is fine. Availability zones, I will select all of them, each of them. The reason I'm choosing all of them is because when I started my web servers, I didn't know which availability zone and which subnet they were launched. If I go, I can find out. But I'm checking all of them so that whichever availability zone and subnet they are, the load balancer should be able to direct traffic to them. Okay, so this is fine. I have selected all of them. And for the security group, let's uncheck this. And let's create a new security group, right? For this one, I'll click here. And for rule, I will just allow HTTP traffic from anywhere. right from anywhere outbound rule is fine create a security group I have to give a description allows HTTP traffic okay and click on create security group now if I come here and refresh this I can find the security group that I created, which is this one. Okay. And, and I have to take this SG out, right? This is my load balancer name, not SG. So this is a security group. I can take out this one. Now this security group is attached to this load balancer. And for the listener port 80 is fine. And now here, the interesting thing, I need to create a target group. Okay. Right now, there is no target group. I will create a target group here. Let's click here because that's where the load balancer will direct traffic. Instances. Yeah, of course, we have both instances where the load balancer will forward traffic. And the target group name, I will copy and paste. Port 80, protocol HTTP version 1, health check, what I'll do, I'll make this guy 10. And here I will make it 10, I mean you don't need to, but why I'm doing it, because reason is that I'm running both my web servers on the free tier, on T2 micro instances. What I'm thinking is what could happen actually if I keep it lower, then if the load balancer doesn't get a health check response within the time configured, the load balancer may make a decision that oh, this web server is not running even though that web server is running, right? That's why I'm increasing this healthy threshold to 10. And similarly, the unhealthy threshold to 10. Increasing the health check timeout reduces the risk of load balancer considering web servers unhealthy. That's the reason I increased them to 10. The timeout is fine. And let's click on next. Okay, let me take out practitioner because it should not be more than 32. And next. Now we see both of them here in the target. Select both of them. I will click here. Include as pending below. 
Let me pull it here. Click on create target group. Okay, so the target group has been created. If I come here and refresh, I should be able to see this target group. For this load balancer, this is the target group. Okay. Tags are fine. Okay, now I click on create load balancer. Load balancer has been created. Now if I come here, this is my load balancer. And if I click here, if you come here, right now it is provisioning. Let it provision. Now it is active. Let me copy this DNS name and open a new tab and paste it here. I got this output, hello world, IP 172.31.61.28, which is which one, which is this one, right? If I refresh again, it changes to 39, which means this one, right? Alternatively, it will forward to one and then to the other one, right? Now, if I refresh again, 28, 39, 28, the load balancer is forwarding traffic to web server one and web server two. Right, as you can see, this is working. Our load balancer is working fine. Now let me do one thing. Let me go to the EC2 dashboard and stop one of those instances. Let me stop this one and see what happens. What load balancer does. Now this instance is stopping. Let it stop. The first instance, I think, was this one. Let me check it. Still, it is stopping. Let it stop. Now it is stopped. If I come here, this page is not working. This guy was the first one. And this one is second one. This is working fine. Okay. Now if I go to my load balancer, it will always send to 28. See this? This is always sending to this one, right? Not to this one, because this one is stopped, right? All right, now if I go back and I see what I'll do. This one is stopped, right? This one, let me start again. This one, start this. Okay, okay, so now this is pending. Ignore these, I've tried many of them. I've terminated all of them. Only these two are active ones. It is starting up. It is pending. Let me refresh again. Now both of them are running. Now if I come here, refresh it. Come here. This is fine. 28 is fine. This is fine. What about this one? Oh, okay, I got it. Because the server is stopped and restarts, the public IP address changes. I need to copy this new public address, or I can just start from here. I need to take out this one. Now I got this one, right? That one is off. This one and this one are working. Now, if I come to my load balancer and let's see, 28, 39, 28, 39, it is directing traffic as usual, which it was doing earlier. Forwarding traffic to instance one and instance two, right? That's it for this lecture. I think this lecture was very interesting. We learned how to set up an application load balancer. We created two EC2 instances, and then we set up the target group of both these instances and we saw how to set up a load balancer and how the load balancer directs traffic to the target group, instance one, instance two. The interesting point, as we talked about earlier, is that when we stop the instance and restart, the public IP address changes. The private IP address remains the same.